Welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, proud to be the world's number one community for brilliant childcare leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the childcare industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Elif Childcare Insurance. Give Blake a call at 972-232-2258 to get a free quote on childcare business insurance today. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, our hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode 74 of the Childcare Genius Podcast. We're your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. So well, hi, everybody. We're so excited to be recording today's episode, and it's the second episode of 2024. I'm sure the year is flying by for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're excited to announce that our Child Care Genius Live Conference is going to be April 14th, 15th, and 16th. If you haven't got your tickets yet, it's going to be the most advanced child care conference in the world. And no sales pitches. Yeah, so we don't, we're not going to do anything, any sales pitches. If you don't like those at conferences, you're going to love ours. Uh, all of our speakers are going to be faculty members. You can't buy your way onto our stage. You're not going to be sold anything from stage. And the owners and directors will both have different experiences. Going to be in different rooms, learning yeah. different content, um, which I think is amazing. No other, no other t- uh conference does this which allows you to get learn focused content so you're both learning at different levels and day three you could have the choice between expansion 201 or leadership 201 and the owners can go in either one or but directors have to go into the leadership side we're going to do some poolside networking and coaching and tickets are on sale right now go to childcaregenius.com and we hope to see you in las vegas april 14th 15th and 16th so today's guest on the podcast is Lisa Giancarli. Uh, I have been coaching Lisa for many, many years. She's a great friend, and she's been a coach on our team, one of the professors of Child Care Genius University, for over a year now. She's also a featured speaker at our Child Care Genius Live Conference in Las Vegas, and I think you're going to love this episode. Um, she is a great speaker, and a, he has a great heart. And she has a large school in New Jersey and is a great owner in her own right. Let's get Lisa on the line. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you doing today? Great. Good morning. How are you guys doing? We are absolutely doing good. We're recording a couple podcasts today. It is the uh, week before Christmas, but this is going to be airing the second week of January. And you'll see Carol and I are not in our podcast studio today. We're actually recording uh, at a friend's house because we have no power, no internet. Um, me and got hit with a bad windstorm and uh, we lost one of our schools and we're kind of in the dark at home. So we figured we'd just shift over to a friend's house. We're in his office right now. And But uh, things happen, right? We Like the, like, the, yeah. like my good friend Lisa said, if you could survive a pandemic without ever closing <laughs> down, then you could survive just about anything. So, you know, that, the pandemic, I think, put most of us child care owners to the ultimate test. So what the hell is a nor'easter? You know, we can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nor'easter is a hurricane. Um, it's like a, a mini hurricane, basically. Mm-hmm. But for us, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, mm-hmm. And it was it was it was pretty rough. 70 mm-hmm. mile an hour winds, which tore our roof off the building. And of course, three inches of rain flooded the entire building out. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. And uh well, we'll manage that. We always do. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is our second episode of 2024. Crazy. And so how are things with your school? Any any big resolutions for this year, Lisa? You know, I, I was thinking about that and I, I've always been like a general planner, but I think my big resolution this year is to be more intentional with my planning, um, not just with the school, but with, you know, my home life, my personal life, um, just to be more intentional. Um, be more specific. I think that's really what's going to propel me um, forward. And I guess I based that decision on, I think I was just like reflecting the other day, I say, where was I this time last year? And I think I've moved forward, but I think you always have to reflect. And then 
it will help you set your goals for the for the upcoming year. So I think just to be a little more intentional, just to get a little more momentum than I had last year. I mean, I had momentum, but just to even get more momentum. Sure. Well, let's get to know you a little bit better. Um, okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about your child care program and the crazy story about how you got into the child care <laughs> business? Um, I have one child care center located in central New Jersey. I'm about dead center between New York and Philadelphia. Um, I'm licensed for 185. Um, I own the school and own the building, my husband and I. And my crazy story is, as you both know, is I got into this business purely by accident. Um, my husband's a real estate investor. We bought the building with the um, intention on having an investment and someone purchasing the school. And of course, we were going to have, you know, nice passive income from the school and the other part of the building. And when the uh, buyer backed out, my husband said, Lise, um, we're going to keep this school. And I was like, what? <laughs> I knew nothing about the child care industry. Um, the only thing I knew about children was having my own. Um, so after a couple of years of, you know, resistance and um, just being miserable about it, I found a coaching business and a coaching organization. And uh, it really, really propelled me forward. And as you know, I met you, Brian and Carol, and Brian became my coach and mentor, and the rest is history. And I love those days. I remember when I first started with you, you you're like, I've been figuring this out for a while, but I want some help to move to the next level. And that's yeah, what we've absolutely. done. You're killing it, Lisa, and very proud of what you've put together up there. For, yeah. you know, A lot of people become owners because they've worked in childcare or had some relation. To come out of the side, you're like the reluctant owner, you know, that your husband oh, yeah. kind of dragged you into it but you know what you could have said no you know you know what you're like okay let me give this a try you didn't quit and now you like it and you're doing good at it I do I do and you know what I think it is too like anybody I guess can get into the business if you understand that it's a business you know some people work in the business and then they want to be the owner but they still act like a teacher or director and you kind of sometimes have to separate like the emotion and the business responsibility to say like, okay, we, we do provide nurturing and care for children, but we also have to run it like a business. And sometimes I don't think people see, see them as, as that, you know, it's, it's sometimes harder to get over <clears throat> the hump. Maybe if you've been in the business with, <clears throat> as a teacher and director, but when your name, <clears throat> excuse me, is on the bottom line or you're responsible for the mortgage, the rent, the payroll, the insurance, it, it puts you in a different mindset and Absolutely you definitely have to shift it. No doubt about it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you, like I said, you've done good. I mean, you had an entrepreneur mindset, you know, being in real estate investors and, but mm -hmm. you know, your kids, you were just becoming, you know, an empty nester recently. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, things are a little bit different now. And, and uh, mm -hmm. how's your, how's your business doing since COVID? Um, my business has been great since COVID. I, it was, it was, it was tough, but I got through and um, especially being involved in a, <clears throat> a coaching group and, and, and weekly calls with people that were going through the same thing as me, you know, with, could we stay open? Could we pay the bills and stuff like that? And I think that um, just figuring out, not just how to survive, but how to thrive. Like during that time period, I have to say that I got a lot of grant money that, um, you know, you have to figure it out, find out that grant money, apply for it. It helped with um, um, salaries, bonuses, retention, uh, PPE for the business. Um, I just got a, an improvement grant through the state of New Jersey to improve my building. So even though we're seeing the grant money kind of come to a halt, I think that I was able to take all that grant money and really um, do good, do good things for my school and my employees and, you know, still keeping my financial part of the business positive, more than positive. It's probably been really positive. So there was a lot of good, good to come out of it. Um, you know, and I guess I just changed again, my mindset on, you know, pivoting and, and saying, okay, well, here's the situation now. So how can we move forward? And, and my, I don't think I really ever dropped in an enrollment. Um, I have more staff than I've ever had. Um, I'm at my, like most that I've ever had. Um, 
enrollments still coming in. So, you know, you, you learn to take what you experience and, and move forward. I think that's what is so helpful in, in the coaching business. I mean, I don't help or tell anybody anything that I haven't been through. That's exactly right. And that's the best, uh, best coach is somebody that can call from experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of our coaches on our team are owners or former owners. And we've all had to deal with those kind of struggles. And I, you know, we, we still deal with them because, you know, we still own schools ourselves. So we're still in the, the thick of it. It's, it's mm -hmm. a much easier to coach when you have to go through the same struggles as your people. Um, and we just found more ways to overcome those struggles because we've been mm -hmm. doing it maybe a little bit longer. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, you've been coaching on our team for a year <laughs> now. And can you tell our audience what you like best about Chalker Genius University? You know, I thought about this. Um, I love helping people. <clears throat> And I love using my experiences if, if it can help them to help them. I mean, sometimes I wish I had a coaching program in those earlier years when I had to figure everything out by myself. So when you're in a coaching program, it's like you're on a team, you know, and if I didn't, and if like, sometimes I tell some of my coaching clients, like if, if I don't have that experience, I'm like, I'm going to call one of the other coaches because she's great at that or he's great at that. So it's almost like it's, it gives you such a community to tap into. And sometimes we even tap into our members, which I'll give you a quick example. Um, I've had a family enroll this week who is the parents, they're from the Ukraine and the parents don't speak any English and the daughter is not assimilating into our program. And we have to have a meeting with the parent today. And I called one of our members, Natalia, to ask her if she would get on a call with, with me last night at like seven o'clock. And her text back to me was, sure, love to help you. Call me in the morning, give me a little bit of background. So it's not only that we're um, helping other owners, but like we have this community that like, who could I call that's a childcare owner that speaks Ukrainian if I wasn't in this group to have that connection with her? So it was just like a great like, oh my God, I'm so lucky. I woke up like, you know, to this crazy day, but I'm like, I'm so lucky that I have that to tap into. And we all have that, whether it be like somebody that we need to know that's on the East coast or the West coast or speaks a different language or has, you know, a franchise or has one center multiple, like there's always somebody in there that can help us, whether we are the coach or we are the member, like we're just, we're, we're such a community. It's, it's, it's a fabulous thing to be a part of. And I think what else I love about being involved and being a coach is like, even though I feel like I coach and help people, I always learn something myself and I'm always, and I'm still growing myself. And I will always like, after I get off, off a call with somebody, like I'll always have come off that call learning something, not just giving advice or help to someone. Yep. Like being just continuing to be a student, continuing to grow myself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Love that for sure. You know, coaching is all about, um, there's two things you can get help with coaching, coaching to help you, you know, you know, create more revenue or, or, or find a better way to do things sometimes more profitable. And it's also used to make mitigate your losses, mm -hmm. meaning that if you make mistakes, you make mistakes that cost the least amount possible. So there's two ways to win with coaching, avoiding mistakes or mitig minimize, you know, mitigating or minimizing mm -hmm. them, and also finding ways to be more profitable in your school, which of course, more profit means, you know, more teacher pay, salaries, you got sure. more money to do things with marketing, things like that. It's not always about lining your pockets. So being able to, you know, pull on resources for those two things, um, which is very important. So and sometimes um, you also learn from the people that have had the biggest failures. You know, like we know one of our coaches had like huge financial failure to turn around to have like double the financial success, you know, and then yep. you don't have to go down that failure as deep as he or she did because you can learn from her. So with the big failures come the big learning and the big successes afterwards, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, Carol and I just losing a school due to wind and flood damage. You know, I've had clients deal with that before. I've never dealt with that on my own. And mm -hmm. helping them through those situations has helped me to be able to deal with this situation. This happened two days ago. 
you know, and right. recording this podcast. And, you know, just it didn't phase my business. My team did what they were supposed to do. And that's what training is all about. And, and planning. Uh, yeah, but helping other people through it, I was able to, to know what to do when it happened to me. Of course, right. Of course, yeah. Or sometimes even now, you know, something that this happened to you and our and our other coach, but to sit here, because I thought about it this morning, I say, okay, I know that we've talked about um, what happens to my building if something like this would happen and where are we going to go for six months or however long it takes. So it's 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 things that you don't want to think about, but you always have to plan for, you know, just like when we do active shooter drills and fire drills and lockdown drills. Like you never have to ever want to do a real one of them, but you do it every month, right? Because you know that someday it might happen and you have to be, you have to practice it. Yep. hundred you know, percent. It's like anything yeah. else in the business, you know? Exactly. And my team, when the, when the roof started caving in and the ceiling tiles came crashing down, they saw it as a city and they moved all the kids to the side of the building where the wind wasn't. And all the ceiling tiles came crashing down in the infant room and the toddler room. Thankfully, mm -hmm. they had moved the kids five minutes before. So our quick acting staff, which, of course, we train on this stuff. They didn't, like, panic. They did right. exactly what they are told to do. We're so proud of, of them. But that's mm -hmm. what training is all about. Yeah, and also the evacuation drills that we do, they had to bring the kids at when it started getting really bad to the building next door, which we already had in place because we do the evacuation. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and then having... because you've, oh, sorry that you've had this experience, but don't think that I'm not going to bring it up in my next staff meeting, you know, to right. say like, it's, it's real. I know we do this all the time. You're, yeah. We put the thing against the window and we shut the door and make the kids sit down. But like, you guys just went through it. So to, to really like, you know, let them know that it really does happen and hopefully it won't happen to, to us, but, like the less more you're prepared and the more you remain calm, you know, the less craziness will will happen because you're you're prepared. Right. Yeah, this stuff's supposed to happen in like Kansas with tornadoes. <laughs> exactly. Like South Carolina with tornado with hurricanes. It Maine it usually doesn't happen, but again, you still practice it because you never know what could happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny. My husband really loves this quote, and I don't know whose quote it is, but he says it a lot and I love it. It says, chance favors the prepared mind. Oh, I love that. And I love yeah. that quote because it's so true. You know, it's not like luck and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, it, you, you'll you be more lucky or the odds will go with you if you're a little more prepared. And and that's exactly, you know, what you've done. You can't totally prepare for your roof coming off, but, you know, you prepare by you teach the teachers and your staff what to do in case that this does happen, you know? So it's definitely, like I said, helping people, and the community that we've established and our community just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, and sometimes it just amazes me too, because we're, we're just, we're international, but like, I love that I, I could pick up the phone and call a friend in like Nevada or South Carolina or even Northern New Jersey where I am. And just to get like the help that I need, you know, or give help when, when needed. So I, it's definitely the community, um, it, it, you know, it's a lot of things. It's definitely a lot of things. So Lisa, in September, you and your husband, Joe, joined us at the Chaco Genius Leverage Conference in Jamaica. Can mm -hmm. you share with the audience what your experience was like? It was probably one of the best conferences that I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of conferences. And I think what was so great about it was the way it was um, designed um, it wasn't like a full day of overload of information. It was um, hit the ground running in the morning and by the afternoon we were done. And it was just enough time to soak in what was presented that day without, you know, trying to get it all in and write it all down. And then to be able to um, socialize with everybody in the afternoon, I feel like that the way we were just hanging out so casually, but every conversation that we turned, that turned into like a business, like a talk about the business, but it was just so like, you know, we're not standing around in suits and being professional, not that we were not, and not professional, but like just to really talk candidly with everyone about ideas, successes, what you're doing, what I'm doing, what you're struggling. Like it's so continued on, but I felt like the cat, the casualness of like 
like some days, you know, we were standing in the pool having conversations with other owners. And um, I think that the casualness, like, let's just be a little more vulnerable if you have, you know, problems and, and you just get them out there or successes. And I think it just made everybody really share on like a, just a comfortable, realistic level, or maybe they would ask you questions when we were poolside that they didn't want to ask in, in the room full of people, you know, so it just kind of gave it a different um, vibe, a different comfort level with everybody. And um, not to mention, it wasn't a bad place to go to Jamaica for a week and, you know, have conference. Yeah, the weather was pretty darn good. Yes, yes. And comedy, it's just everything. It was just different. It's just, you know, some people go to conference, like, oh, I got to go to conference. You know, they, it's just not exciting. You know, people think you're going somewhere exciting, but this was exciting because of the way, like I said, it was set up and how we designed it. It was, it was just, it was great. What do you see in the area that child, most child care owners are struggling with right now? Well, like everybody since the pandemic, staffing still continues to be a huge issue, huge. Mm -hmm. But um, my one of my biggest pain points at my center, and I know it's common with a lot because I'm involved in you know groups and even Facebook groups and stuff like that, but I feel like we're having a big problem now with child behaviors and developmental delays. And a lot of the teachers, along with even, you know, my administration, they don't always know how to handle it. Um, I think that COVID has had a, an effect on the kids and the parents. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, we had to let go a few children this year just because um, parents weren't um, being realistic about their developmental delays and, you know, getting them into, you know, child um, study teams and evaluations and stuff like that. And it's not that we ever want to disenroll a child, but we also want to give them the best, you know, we want to give them a head start in, in their development so that by the time they get to kindergarten, they're, they're ready. But if you just let these children lag behind, they'll, they'll never have the opportunity to catch up. And I think that's been a big challenge because I almost feel like some teachers have to be special ed teachers and we don't usually have that in our industry. It's more like on an elementary and above level. And, um, you know, with the developmental delays and even with the behaviors, I've, I've seen like a lot of just defiant behavior, almost like dangerous behavior. And um, I think that's the new, it's like, we're calling it the COVID effect, but I think it is because I think a lot of children have been kept home with their parents who've been working at home. And when the parents are getting their children into childcare centers, the kids don't know how to assimilate. They don't have the social skills. They don't know how to take direction and, and follow routine. And, and it's, and it's been a challenge for um, our teachers. And, and I also see like, and then it goes back to staffing, like they're tired, they're burned out. They want more assistance in the classroom. And then you're trying to hire and then nobody has, shows up for interviews or they come the first day and they quit because you know, it's too much. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a big circle that keeps like affecting, you know, each other. It's definitely been a challenge since since COVID, um, mm -hmm. but uh, you know a lot of our clients are they're thriving through it. You know, I think staffing Absolutely. is starting to settle down, and mm -hmm. I think behavior issues will be a problem for a while. I mean, mm -hmm. even even with staffing, we have staffing behavior issues a lot of oh, people yeah. are dealing with as well. We have kids, mm -hmm. but this you know, and I think staffing. us as owners or administrators, I just think we have to be a little more realistic when we're interviewing people. Like you know, we're you're not just going to be like changing diapers and feeding kids lunch. You're going to have to be dealing with kids that you know, it's going to take a little more. Like even I have a, a director that just started with me. She's been with me six months now and she's been in this industry for 20 plus years. And she said like the childcare industry and preschool teaching is, is different than, than the years that she's been involved in it. Like she just sees the whole change in how, how everything is, is changing. And she definitely sees that it's, um, you know, harder, more difficult for teachers, you know, to get to get a to get a handle on all this it's you know it's a yeah. struggle and I, I have friends that own other types of businesses and they're having the same staffing challenges behavior oh, yeah. issues so it i think it's a it's an employee issue i mean 60 percent of americans right now are on either depression or anxiety medicine which goes mm -hmm. to tell you that there's some people out there really struggling since mm -hmm. covid and that may transcend into what we're seeing on the mental health side into the daycare side. And some people that aren't 
on medication, probably self-medicating, and that is not good either. So right. there are issues. I think you have to have some grace with staff, get them help, get them resources you need to. Absolutely. Um, and realize that not everybody's going to be perfect. And those days were, you know, majority of your team were A players. I think now the majority are going to be B and marginal Cs, and you're hoping to get a couple A's. But, you know, you're going to have to let go. I think now you let go of the bad ones. Um, mm -hmm. And then more people are going to be average or just slightly above or slightly below average. That's where the norm's mm -hmm. going to be, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think you also have to pivot in the way that you um, recruit people. You know, like we did a nice presentation. Christine did us for a couple months ago on, you know, just how to utilize Indeed and how to write ads that grab the right people into your center and you know to really get the phone to ring and really get people to come in and want to interview and want to come into your center you know we're the, everything is just so like ai and and algorithms and stuff like that and i think as you in, in any business in this world you have to learn how to keep keep up with it you know how to what's the algorithm what's the yeah, what's yeah. the greatest job ad title for indeed that's going to make my phone ring and what works in my area might not work in your area. So it's almost like as owners of any business, we're just constantly, constantly learning about the change in like the technology and how to, you know, we have this all this great technology, but then it could be a blessing and it could be a curse. So you so you just try to have to, you know, continue to educate yourself and stay on top of things. And then that's like a whole nother job role in your in your business to, you know, keep For keep. Sure. So Lisa, oh, <laughs> for sure. So tickets are on sale now for our Child Care Genius Live Conference in Las Vegas, April oh, yeah. 14th, 15th, and 16th. You're going to be one of our featured speaker speakers there. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to hearing your session. Um, why should somebody should why should someone attend this? Wow, why should somebody attend it? I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> you want to learn? You want to advance your business. You want to help solve your problems. You want to hang out with a bunch of good people that have a common goal, um, that have similar business problems, that have similar business successes. Um, networking, having a good time. I don't. I, there's so many things I could I could talk forever. It's just something that you 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 wouldn't want to miss. You don't want to miss it's, you know, how can you be really good on it? Like, think about it as an, in an athlete perspective, like how can you be really good on the team? If you never go to practice, like these are kind of the things that you need to, you can't just walk on a football field and be good without putting the work in. And sometimes it takes, you have to get away from your business and you have to go train yourself. It's like a training, you know, like, and you're going to come back and you're going to be so motivated, so on fire. You're going to learn so many things. You're going to also see that your problems are everybody else's problems. We're all going through the same struggles. And you're also going to come back um, with a bigger network with people that you could tap into. And you're, and you're, you're going to see your, your business just move forward. And then in the next year, it's, it's, you shouldn't, you, you wouldn't want to miss it. Yeah, Tell me why you shouldn't go, not why you should go. Cause I, I couldn't answer that. You, you have to go. <laughs> Yeah, it's a three-day conference, and uh, this is for owners and also for directors as well. You want to bring your team members. We're going to have – there will be separated owner's room and, team, and director's room, mm -hmm. and you're going to be teaching uh, in the owner's room, um, which is going but to be great. And you're going to be good. your directors need to come forward. because it's hard for you to come back as an owner and explain your excitement. So you need to work out on having your director leave your center and getting him or her there and letting her and him or her experience it for themselves because – you can't come home and 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 relay everything that you've learned. They have to experience it. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Lisa. If they want to see you, they can come to Las Vegas and see Let's you. See. Or if they want to check it out, you're one of our professors in Child Care Genius University. And you are amazing. And I am so proud to be able to work with you each and every day. Oh, thank you. And, As are um, you I too. To, and I thank you for coming on the Child Care Genius Podcast today. Thank you for taking your time away from your school. Uh, and away from your clients uh, to share a little bit with our audience. And we really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. That was a great interview. Um, I love talking to Lisa. She is just such a nice lady mm -hmm. and um, loves people, loves helping people. 
and has really come into her own as far as a child care center owner. So really, really proud of what she's accomplished in central New Jersey. So if you need help in your child care business and you'd like a free coaching call with one of our certified coaches that can help you in any area in the business you're struggling in, go to childcaregenius.com and under the coaching tab, select, I'd like a free coaching call. And you're guaranteed to come away with two or three action items that you could take in any area in your business that you're struggling in. So this includes episode 74 of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend a little bit of time with us. And just a reminder to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. We'll, we'll see, see you next week. week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your childcare business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Childcare Genius community.